Hello everyone and welcome to another Houdini quick tip. So after a long time I just decided to post another video and show you some techniques uh, for retiming your simulation especially for the RBD one and this method is not going to work for volumetrics at all but uh, it's very good if you have RBD simulation or you have the animated geometry and loaded from disk in LMB or another format it doesn't matter and also how you can just generate the subframe data. This subframe data is like is very important, especially when you have fast moving objects and uh, it's necessary sometimes to do your simulation, for example, using five sub-steps or 10 sub-steps. So it all depends on the shot. So this is very useful technique. Uh, I'm going to just uh, play this video so we can see the result. It's very simple, but it's going to work uh, no matter how how much complex is your geometry. These techniques is work very good. So let me just play and you can see I did a retime here. And again, back to the normal speed. OK, I just prepared already the setup here and just uh, go through the setup. Maybe I do it uh, here from scratch or maybe just use here. And so I just want to take a look at uh, this prepared some text here already so is this technique is great for retiming the rbd seam and you can save a lot of this space because you don't need to cache all your simulation and cache your subframe data so if you have like 100 frame and you you need to cache like five sub steps for each frame you're going to have 500 frames of uh, simulation so it's going to be the disk space depends on your simulation is going to be massive and if this one can be used to generate subframe data when there is no subframe available and can be used for alembic cache from animation department so it's not just specific to alembic but the, the alembic is like most uh, the standard way of working currently and also usd is coming and more studio is uh, using that now but uh, let's just uh, go through the setup and see how this works okay the first i have just a test geometry robert toy just move it up and transform and just scatter some point and uh, use the Voronoi fracture to just fracture geometry and here is just the simulation so let me just do the simulation I already cache it so here is the the cache one so here I did uh, just already using the new file cache sub in Houdini 19 I just save it so as you can see here is the time and start and here is the increment. So if you want to like save your subframe data, you need to change this one. For example, if I want four sub steps save on the disk, I can use like 0.25 here and just change this uh, geometry file to $FF. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to have the subframe data, but the problem is the disk space. So if you have like very heavy destruction simulation is going to be massive size. So one of the reason I just use the default one and here is just dollar F. I just wanted to show you how to do it here. Okay. Now if I just play this the default simulation, right? And the problem is if I need some subframe data between, for example, I don't know this frame and this frame, right? Is the jump is like quite big in this this one? Although the speed is not too much, but it's still sometimes you, you need a lot of like uh, more data here between this, uh, the pieces, right? From point A to point B. Let me just open the Alt Shift G, the global animation option. So this one is uh, the same as uh, this option that we have here. So the shortcut is uh, Alt Shift G. So by default, if I, you can see the playback is integer frames. So if I turn off this one, I just the step put like 0.25. Now I can check here the, the subframe, right? If I move forward, see, I don't have any data here. So after you imagine after this one, you want to do another simulation, right? So for example, generating, I don't know, like debris or something. So you are lacking, especially when your objects moving too fast. So how you can fix this is uh, this uh, combining this uh, simple technique here. You can just generate the sub data. So I'm just just keep it as what it is, or maybe I go even lower to the steps. Just play, and you can see we don't have anything here, so it doesn't move at all until we go to like proper frame number like 22 or maybe 23. Right, so if I 
move one frame forward like to 23 so we have the animation but between these two we don't have okay uh, let me just uh, keep this one open here because we might need to come back to this so first thing I need to just go to the to the first frame to the rest position that we have right I just use a time shift and just uh, remove the expression and use the frame one in this case and after that I just use the extract transform so we I, I did another video on uh, for this extract transform so you can do some other cool stuff using this one so I use the this one everything is default uh, you can just use the, the if you have the RBD simulation and you have, you have the like name attribute or class attribute already on your geometry, you can just turn on this one and uh, do a time blend here. I'm going to just turn off the retime for now. And here is just time blend. This take this one is to generate the subframe. And after that, you can just use the transform pieces. Okay. So now if I scrub the timeline, you can see we have a very good subframe data already generated okay so this one when you use, use the extract transform you can see here we have the orient attribute and the only thing we get is just a pivot point and the orient attribute right and this one is the name attribute and so it's already on the geometry so it doesn't matter but this orient attribute is generated which is very important for time blend node you have to take this interpolate rotation of normal quaternion and transform this is very important. If you don't do this, you're going to have sometimes problem, as you can see in this area. See, we have a like weird animation, right? It's like popping from this frame to this frame. So for for that for this is the reason we use the extract transform to generate the orient automatically. So you just need to tick this one, and now everything is works like very good. If you have the uh, already normal and in your geometry and you see you, you have some popping on your normal you just use the like delete attribute and remove the normal from here so you don't get that uh, weird black color on your geometry between two frames because it's going to interpolate right here is you have the interpolate rotation of normals and stuff so it's very important I just uh, quick tip I wanted to share and after this one if you want to you just uh, you just transform p's and here connect your from your frozen geometry your rest frame and you just point generated by this free time and uh, extract by extract transform you just connect it to transform pieces that's it so you have a very good uh, like high quality subframe data here and then if you want to retime it is even easier you just use a retime node and just do the retime you can just keyframe as i did here right so if I turn on the integer frame and just play, you can see very good quality animation you can generate and retiming using this only these four nodes. Yeah, it's like extract transform, time blend, retime, and transform pieces. Okay, why we just don't use the, the time blend, right? Or by default, you can just use the time blend, just connect it to your cache, okay? Let me just turn off the integer frame and go to substep like 0.1 again. You can see the problem here. Here is the, the result you get if you don't use this extract transform. And this is like kind of weird. You can use also attribute delete, for example. I think this one is like normal problem. Now, if I delete the normal, we fixed this one, but this one, in this case, it might work. Sometimes it depends on your simulation. It's not going to work, which is the this, this second example I, I, I will show you. This torus, this is just a simple example to show you what is the problem to just use the, the time blend by itself. So I just uh, did a rotation here using the expression. So I rotate the geometry like 90 frame between each frame, right? 90 degrees between each frame. So, but because I use the transform, if I turn off this integer frame and go to point 0.1, of course, we're going to have the, the subframe data, right? Because this is not loaded from disk or it's not a alembic without subframe. So that's why I use the time shift and use the integer frames. So then we, it's like normal animation without any subframe, right? So this is the problem you're going to encounter in a lot in production. So you don't have any subframe. So how we can fix this one? If I just use the 
the time blend itself. This is the problem that you have. Just see, it's going to deform the geometry because it's going to interpolate the position based on the normal. On, I don't know if you have even velocity, you can use that. So it's going to change your geometry. The shape is different. So that's the reason this technique, if you want to even use it for just one object, not even RBD simulation, or for example, for your collision object loaded from disk, you can use this the same technique and you just do ex extract transform, just only turn off the name attribute because we don't have uh, like one, more than one piece and then do the time blend or if you want to do read time and just, I just turn off this one for now and just do transform pieces. Now you can see everything is working perfect fine. So yeah, basically this is the, the thing I wanted to share with you. I think it's very useful in production in a lot of situation and you can save a lot of disk space especially. And uh, I think one of the biggest challenges in simulation in general is uh, simulating the fast moving objects without having subframe data. So it's, very, it's going to be like most of the time you don't get the right result. So this lack of uh, subframe data is the I think the the most uh, uh, is one of the biggest problem or the most important and then you need to generate it yourself or you can use this technique yeah basically that's it and thanks for watching